I'm Justin, and like many Gibraltarians, I grew up eating my granny's delicious food. The smells and flavours created in my family's kitchen inspired me to learn and discover more about the mouth-watering dishes that make us Gibraltarian. Today I'm going to be making some Italian and Spanish inspired recipes. As you know, Gibraltar has a very vibrant culinary history and lots of different cultures make up what is Gibraltar. So I'm going to make some rotto and some calentita which are inspired by the Genoese and Maltese heritage and also some mantecado which are inspired by the Spanish heritage. I'm going to be making the uh, rotto first and afterwards go on to the calentita and the mantecado as the rotto takes some time to cook and um, let's see how we get on. So to begin the rotto, we're going to be making a refrito. We're going to dice up some onions and some garlic, fry those until they're nice, soft and translucent, and then we're going to add in the rest of the ingredients. So let's begin by dicing the garlic. If you remember, then we'll slice across the garlic, slice halfway up and down. That way we get a nice little fine dice for the garlic. The same with the onions, we're going to slice in half. We'll remove the top layer as we don't need the skin and we'll start to dice dice the onion as well. We we'll want to finely dice it, not too small but we don't want it too chunky either as that will spoil the, the rotto. We want it to be there but not very noticeable. So, And once you have this ready just uh, put it straight into the pan and fry before we place the onions and the garlic to fry it, we're going to chop up the carrots. This way it's already in set, so as soon as they're translucent, we can add the carrots and add the sauce, and we can dice up the meat in the meantime and just add it straight into the pot. And we can leave that to stew, and once everything's nice and ready, we can boil the pasta and carry on with the rest. So let's just dice the carrots now and go from there. So we'll cut the ends off, oh, we don't need those. And uh, I like to cut these angular and lengthways, because I want the carrots to be a statement part of the uh, dish so we want them to be visible and we want everyone to enjoy them so don't cut them too thick don't cut them too thin but these are nice and lengthwise uh, we need about two or three carrots this this dish should feed about maybe three or four people so you should have enough there to satisfy everyone Look, not every family likes to use mushrooms my family's always made it with mushrooms. I know every Gibraltarian family can make the rotto, make different dishes their own way. They've adapted it as they've grown up. But I like to use mushrooms. So if you want to add some mushrooms, use about three or four different mushrooms, wash them, make sure there's no soil in them and just chop them up. Just take the stalks off because we don't want that part and just chop it up nicely and thinly. So your vegetables are chopped. You want to prepare a nice pan with some hot oil for you to just put, use a dollop of oil and add your onions and your garlic. So we put, pour these straight into the pan, make sure it's hot first and uh, straight in there. Don't add, the, don't add the carrots just yet, but pour in your onions and your garlic and everything in there. Wait for this to stew for a bit, just shake it up to make sure everything's nice and spread out and leave it there until it's nice and soft. When that's ready, we'll add the carrots and we'll add the mushrooms just before the carrots, if you're using them, if you're not using them then just go straight to the carrots. Uh, wait until that's a bit soft and we'll add the sauce and we'll add a one stock cube, a beef stock cube. If you're using chicken, use chicken stock cube. We'll cover it, we'll let it stew. So now that the garlic and the onions are frying, we want to dice and chop up our meat. We need at least 500 grams of meat. You can use beef, you can use pork or chicken, it's up to you really depending on the dish. The more traditional that I'm accustomed to, that my mama makes, is the beef. So we're going to uh, chop them up into not too small chunks. What we want is the meat to stew, so enough so that it softens, but not so that it stays very rubbery. So we'll just chop up the meat, at least into 
into this size chunk, that would be enough to, um, to satisfy anyone, enough to make the dish look presentable. So there we go. If you've got any fatty bits, just cut out the fatty bits. That will just turn rubbery, and we don't want that there. So just dice this up. And uh, once you see that your onions are nice and soft and everything's translucent, and you've added the carrots and you've added the sauce, just add these in there, cover it up, and leave it for about 40 minutes. It should soften up. And in the meantime, we'll boil a kettle and we'll boil some, some pasta. The onions are looking nice and soft now, so I'm going to add the mushrooms straight into the pot. So. I'm going to stir this up just so they soften a bit. And uh, once this is ready, I'm going to add the carrots straight into the pot and leave that there just to soften a little bit. I've added the carrots and this is starting to smell really good. So once your refrito is made and your carrots are all in there, I'm going to add the meat. It just pour it straight into the pan so that it starts to sear the outside a little bit. Once this is in the pan, just stir it up, mix it all with the onions and the garlic and the carrots, mix it all together. Leave it there just for a minute, just to stew and pour in your beef stock. Just crush it over, crush it over there and mix it up. This, you can start smelling it, it's nice and beefy, nice and meaty. The beef will start to uh, release some juice, which you will see at the bottom. Just leave that for a minute. Now that the meat is nicely seared and you can see that the juices are all flowing over, the onion's nice and soft and the garlic's ready, I'm gonna put the tomato sauce straight in there and mix it with the half a glass or about just above, above half a glass of white wine and let it all stew together in there. I'm gonna cover the pot and just leave it in there. As soon as I do that, I'm going to boil the pasta and leave the pasta to boil until it's nice and al dente and uh, then we'll come back to it. We need at least a handful and an extra one per person. So if you're cooking for two or three people and this dish makes about three or four people, we'll need a handful each. So we'll just pour that in. And then one extra just because there's always leftover so we don't want anything, we don't want too much sauce, we don't want too little. So we'll just add the extra bit in there and we'll cover it up. And we'll leave that with some salt, a little bit of oil so that it doesn't stick. But that's it for now. Now we're going to leave this there just to cook and stew, leave the pasta to boil, and we'll move on to the next step. We'll move on to the calentita next. It's a very simple Gibraltarian dish. It only has a very few ingredients. So we'll get our oven dish. You can use a glass one or a flat metal one. It's wide enough just to have all your liquid spread out quite thinly. So first of all, we need to begin by covering your oven dish with oil. Not too much, but just enough to cover the base. And we rub these down the sides, just like this. And uh, we place it in the oven. This needs to get very, very hot before we put our mixture in there and put it in the oven. So we'll put this straight in the oven so it heats up. And whilst that's happening, We'll move on to our mixture. Leave it in the oven at about 200 degrees, 225 degrees. We just need to get it very hot and nice and bubbly. So we'll move on to our mixture in the meantime. So grab yourself a bowl. You need a whole packet of chickpea flour. That's about 93 grams, 100 grams. And pour it straight into the bowl. We need to just Put it all in there. Once that's there, just season it with some pepper, some black pepper. So we need to crack some black pepper over that. Depends how, um, how strong you like the taste. So I like it quite peppery, so I'm going to put quite a bit of pepper in there. And uh, then we need to put some salt as well. So season it with quite a bit of salt because uh, we need this. It's very bland, so we need to season it. So just pour in some salt and then we'll 
pour in our water. We need 850 milliliters of water and just pour it straight into the center. So I'll just pour that in there. And once you pour all the water in there, just stir it all together, just mix it up. It's going to be quite lumpy, so don't worry about it. So just mix it all in there. If you want to use a spoon, you can use a spoon. If you want, just use a whisk, but uh, just stir it all up. It has to be a liquid, very fine, not too fine liquid, but just enough liquid and uh, remove the lumps. So now that it's all mixed up, it's okay if it's a little bit lumpy, but it's, once it's all mixed up, uh, we need to let it sit. So I tend to leave it for at least a minimum of two hours in the fridge or preferably overnight. So all the liquid will start to mix and sink a bit and it all becomes nice and smooth. We can just go ahead and use it now. So it depends if you want to prepare it beforehand, you can prepare it as you do it. So once your oven dish is hot and this is nice and smooth, we'll pour this straight in there and uh, we'll leave it in the oven for about 40 minutes to an hour, depending on your oven. You'll see that the sides will become all nice and crispy, the top will congeal and the inside will be nice and soft. So while our current is in the oven, let's pop down to town and see what the public thinks of such an emblematic dish. Well, my mother makes it very well. Yeah. It's my mother's speciality. Ah, okay. Um, so whenever she makes it, we all go home and we sample her, her lovely galentita. And do you have fond, fond memories of the galentita? Or? Yes, fond memories of filling my belly up <laughs> <laughs> with my favourite Gibraltar um, recipe. Do you think the galentita represents Gibraltar? Or? I think so. Whenever you say Galentita, I think Gibraltar, and especially Gibraltarians, know that um, it's ours. I love it. Yeah. Have you tried Galentita before? Yes. Are you locals then? Yes. yes. And you've made it before? No, yourself. I haven't actually. Oh, you haven't? No, I haven't made it before. Okay, Do you, have, you, have you tried to make it no, before? No, oh, okay. no. Well, it's very simple. It's chickpea flour, chickpea salt, flour. pepper, and a bit of oil. And do you think that this dish represents Gibraltar? Yeah, definitely. See, I think over the years, after it hearing has. it from pretty much everyone, todo el mundo calentita, calentita, okay, we've got a whole day after it now, calentita. Yeah, we do. So. But is it something, is something that <laughs> maybe the younger generation should continue making so definitely, it doesn't get lost? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think a lot of things that we, you know, acquired from past generations should get kept alive, you know? To be honest, my family have never really been much into making calentita. We make everything else, like minestra, rotto and everything else, but Calentita, no, no not really but the calentita is meant to be the local Gibraltarian dish, the, the Gibraltar. Yeah, I'm gonna say I, I think I only had it once in my life, and that was at Calentita night. Oh just yeah. Because I wanted to try it because it was meant to be local. Dish. Ah, okay, well, it's try it today. Like that, see what you think. It's corn flour, so it's gluten free. No, it's nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but would you think this dish says Gibraltar, or is it no. is it the Gibraltar dish? I think it's a bit. It's like too plain to be Gibraltar, you have to have more. Okay. More going I think on. Rotto, Minetta, and all the other dishes are a bit more, you know. More to Say more Gibraltar, more, no? More Gibraltar for me. Okay. Very nice though. Try some, please. Mm, so, good. You're local here, no? Yes. Have you made it before then? Uh, no, uh, but obviously my grandmother and my mum still makes them. And do you think that the Galentita makes is, is uh, represents Gibraltar? Galentita is is quintessentially a Gibraltarian dish. It would actually represents a culture. Have you have you tried Galentita before? I've yes. never tried Galentita. And you guys are from Gibraltar, no? Yeah. And how have you not tried it before? I don't know, I've heard a lot about it, but I've never actually had one in my mouth. <laughs> well, try one. <laughs> Grab a piece, let me know what you think then. You know, is this is... Uh, Thank you. Well, the, the calentita is meant to be the Gibraltar dish. I really like it. Because sometimes it's really watery and... Dipped in, dip in sugar. It's not supposed to be with sugar. 
I really like nice, it. Nice. If I knew how to make one, I'd make one. I've got the cookbook, which is all my grandmother's recipes. As everyone yeah. I've asked is always that their grandmothers make the dishes and it's something that they don't do at home. So mm. I'm hoping to try and... Um, it's like a dying art. It's like a dying art, yeah. It's something I want to, younger generations to try and keep alive. So it's something yeah. that you would now try I think I think I would because I, I know there's some recipes, but I don't know them all. And I think if I'm going to have children, we're going to have a family, I think we should continue having gibraltarian meals in our house and keep the traditions alive yeah, what do you think? yeah yo, give it a go revive the calentita perfect yeah. well, thank you. i'll give you the hashtag revive the calentita <laughs> 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 <laughs>